Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're actually gonna look at some more kids. I feel like the past videos have been either vloggy types, either you know, Q and A's and stuff of the sorts. Well, and uh, okay, give me a second. Anyway. In today's video, we're actually gonna look at some more kids. We're gonna make some updates. The theme for today is impossible flower spikes. How does that happen? You're gonna see. Not really impossible, but just flower spikes, I guess. We're gonna look at some more kids that are making some flower spikes. I was not expecting them to make flower spikes or there's something wrong with some of these flower spikes. Right, so before we start, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it and you like to hang out with me and why not subscribe? I post multiple times a week and it's completely free. But if you're feeling a little extra about it, do consider further supporting the channel by becoming a member, checking out the affiliate links down below, checking out the merch or using the super thanks option below my videos. Right, I've learned that by heart. Okay, so the first orchid we're gonna look at is my Yonosidium popcorn Haruri. I feel like I'm mispronouncing that. Right, we have a flower spike on this little orchid and I'm very happy to see it. We also have ants because it hasn't bloomed in a while. It wasn't very hydrated in a while. This orchid has the not so wonderful tendency. Okay, we don't have an ant nest in the pot. So it has a not so nice tendency of climbing. Do we see all of these new growths are kind of growing on top of each other? So I had to kind of remove some of the older growth and the roots and repot it in a way where the newer roots would actually reach the medium. I don't have any possibility of spraying it every day or things of the sorts. Although I have like an idea for an experiment, but that's a different story. So it was set back. It also had quite the nasty thrip infestation, which I managed to get rid of. So we have all of this new growth and ants, <laughs> all of this new growth at the moment, but it is kind of tiny. I do see. I'm, I was afraid it would not bloom this year and I wouldn't have been mad because I understand. But we do have a flower spike, at least one. Now imagine if all of these growths decide to just put out flower spikes. One, two, three, and four with this one. If all four of them would put out flower spikes, that'd be so cute. I don't think they would, but they're not fully mature just yet, we'll see. I'm looking at this one because it's, it's a little more mature, but I don't see anything just yet. We can wait. So the popcorn harbory, in case you haven't seen it in a while, that's why it has been a little sit back, but apparently he's pretty good now. So we're gonna have a flower spike soon. I suspect it's not gonna be the most beautiful and luscious flower spike of life, but it's gonna be a spike nonetheless. So I'm happy about it. Next up here we have the Phalaenopsis Ultrarima variety Champorensis. This one, the mother plant died. I don't know why. Uh, maybe it was something like stem rot, although a part of the stem was still good and it produced two keikis, which is very nice. And one of the keikis is producing a flower spike. Now, would you believe it if I told you these keikis started to grow two months ago? Two months and a half, maybe, max. To maturity and uh, they're producing flower spike. I didn't know they could do that. Phalaenopsis, even though this one used to be something else, it used to be a Doritos. Phalaenopsis generally do have a fast growth. So even if you get a keiki, you can expect it to bloom within the first year. But emphasis on the first year, not the first two months. Now, it could be that these keikis started before I actually noticed them since they're basil, maybe they were, you know, under the bark. But overall, from the moment I noticed them to now it has been two months or two months and a half july maybe i would say and they've grown so fast every day these leaves are longer and longer and look at that i hope you noticed it's not set back it's fully grown the leaves are long they're as long as the mother plant was i mean okay <laughs> so here we are we have a flower spike you see what I'm saying with impossible flower spikes? I was not aware that this can happen. This 
takes the cake in the middle for the fastest growing orchid in my collection. Did you ever have an experience like this with a Pulcherima? Let me know, because I am, I am baffled. I was definitely not expecting this. Next orchid, this is one of the new ones. This one has a ant as well. Get out of here. And now it's on the table somewhere. And now it's gonna pinch me. I already have a pinch from yesterday here. I have a sensitivity, I guess, to their pinches. The, the wound gets like this. And it's so uncomfortable and itchy. It's gonna find me. I don't find the ant now, but it, it will find me. Right, so this one. This is a new or orchid. Vanda Falcata cross with the Denisoniana. And to keep in tune with the title of this video and the subject, it is actually producing a flower spike. I will give you a close up because it's very tiny. I just noticed it. Fingers crossed, it decides to continue. Um, so, why is this impossible? Is it because it's a young orchid? Yeah, that's one. I wasn't expecting it to bloom so young, but it has that Neo Phoenicia, now Vanda Falcara in it, which keeps it small. So this orchid is not necessarily all that young. It is the first blooming indeed, but it doesn't have to grow as large as a Vanda. I thought it would grow a little bit larger than this, but hey, I'm not gonna complain. Why it's impossible is because personally with the two parents, I do not have luck. With Neo Phoenicias, there is no blooms in my life. I'm thinking I'm gonna keep them outside through the winter and see if that helps. I'm gonna create a little space for them and a few more others that really like a cool down and we'll see if that does the trick. If it doesn't, never again Neo Phoenicias. So I don't have success with Neo Phoenicias. I do however have success with the combination between Neo and Vanda, which takes more from the Vanda. But here's the trick. I don't have success with the Fanda Denisoniana either and it's one of my favorites, the orange variety. It's one of my favorites, it has one of the most beautiful fragrances ever. It smells like honeysuckle. If you guys know honeysuckle, I'm drooling. <laughs> it smells so good, so sweet. That's how Vanda Denisoniana smells for me and I love it and I've had multiple of them throughout the years and I just don't do good with them. There's something about the climate that I have that they don't really enjoy. I don't know. So to have a flower spike from these two, you know, it's a little weird, it's a little bizarre. It is a new orchid, so maybe the spike was initiated before I even noticed it. I have it for like three to four months. So, you know, maybe it's not so weird, but definitely, this orchid should not necessarily have a flower spike so soon after I purchase it considering its parentage. Am I going to complain about it? No, 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 but I'm going to show it off. I'm hoping it's gonna continue to develop because the flowers should be really nice and maybe, just maybe, it will inherit the fragrance of the Denisoniana, which I prefer to the Falcara, to be honest. Maybe. I, I hope. We'll see. Here's another one that I actually did talk about in a different video. I think it was a short. This is another new one, Christel Smith and R. That beautiful lavender colored Cattleya, I think, with a yellow center. What a beautiful orchid. And in that short, I was telling you that it's creating a bud and I wasn't expecting a bud because, you know, it's a new orchid. These are new growths. Maybe it didn't bloom before. I think it, it did actually bloom before. I just didn't notice. And well, that bud dried. This is the bud, but we have new buds and these ones are not drying. I think they will develop. We have two buds on this growth, which this growth is larger than the one that I showed you. So fingers crossed, it's gonna fully open. Again, this shouldn't have happened, one, because I wasn't aware this is a tiny orchid. I didn't do my homework and that's not an excuse for the orchid to bloom. <laughs> what? I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, so yeah. I didn't actually know this is a miniature orchid. And second, it's a new orchid and it should take a while to get used to the environment. Am I gonna complain yet again? No, but I'm gonna show it off because at least I'm gonna have the records that it tried to bloom if it fails. <laughs> I'm hoping it won't. I don't know if I told you guys in a previous video, but another one of my really, really preferred contrasts is pink or purple lavender, let's say, with yellow. I really like that contrast and especially a deep sweet purple like um what are they called P 
pansies. Pansies sometimes can have that variety of purple and yellow or orangey coloration. I think that is so beautiful. So I really love that contrast. And that's why I picked this one up. It's really not so common to have cat layout orchids that have a lighter colored uh, lip or throat, and especially in this combination. So that's why I chose this orchid and I'm very excited to see it in bloom. Cross your fingers and toes that it will open the buds and they will not dry. I'm, I'm hopeful though, the growth seems big enough to be able to bloom. Alrighty, next up, my Dendrobium Cuthbertsoni Hybrids. I was considering to make a separate video for this, but maybe it's not necessary. I don't know, maybe I will make a separate like video update. But I know somebody was asking, how are they doing? Well, they're still around and moreover, some are starting to produce buds. So the pink one, which was the first one that I ever got, that one continuously produces new buds. The latest one with new buds though, is this one, the yellowish one. This is Dendrobium Mountain Magic White. It's not really white, it's an off-white greenish light color. It has two new flowers or two new buds. This little bud here and this one, which already looks like a flower. And it's actually doing pretty great. I don't really see roots going out of the pot or anything, but I think it is doing pretty good. And most of them, are still around and are doing most of them. Well, they're all still around, but some are doing a little bit better than others I see. Maybe depends on the quantity of roots they arrived with, but they're doing okay. Finally, the summer is subsiding and in the nighttime temperatures go low enough for these guys to be comfortable. I am not using the air cooler or water cooler anymore. I'm just relying on the ambiental temperature that I have at night. I just opened the windows. So yeah, it's great. The temperature finally goes down to 23, 24 degrees Celsius, which is great. So they're a lot more comfortable now. The water doesn't evaporate so fast, but yeah, as I predicted, I do have a few algae here which I will get rid of. I will just wash really fast the setup. Having a few orchids in clay pots, not a huge deal. Having everybody in clay pots, no. Mm -mm. I would have to deal with this with a few hundred orchids. I can deal with 10, not 10,000. I don't have 10,000 orchids, I'm just saying. So yeah, Cuthbertonis, they're doing great, thankfully. Thank goodness. Next up. Habanarias, woohoo! I'm so excited I have to share it. So, habanarias, have not had a habanaria in bloom. If, did I ever have a habanaria in bloom? No, I did not. This is the first time I'm gonna see a habanaria in bloom. I forgot my first one. I think I had the radiata. Yeah, the first one never bloomed for me. I lost it before it actually ever managed to bloom. This will be the first time that I'm seeing habanarias in bloom and I love habanarias in pictures. These are terrestrial orchids and the ones that I have, um, this is the habanaria rhodochila pink. So this one doesn't have that very spidery white flower that I think we know when we think about habanarias, but it does have Okay, story time. I have a memory from my childhood. I don't know where it ends, I don't know where it starts. I remember somebody once brought me some sort of gummies, but they weren't the see-through gummies. They were solid colored. I think they're yogurt gummies or something. Haribo has some. Um, so I remember pink gummies. And I remember liking them so much. It was the first time I was eating them or something like that, probably after the revolution, because we didn't have food <laughs> during the communism. We were starving. Anyway, um, sorry, going dark there for a bit. Um, I have some dark corners of my memory that I'm trying to suppress, but they sometimes pop up. Anyway, so I have this memory of never seeing this type of jelly before and somebody bringing it in. I think in my memory it had the shape of this flower. So when I see this flower all light pink and having that shape, it triggers that memory and the just joy that I remember feeling. I don't know if I ever had jellies before that, to be honest. So I don't know when this happened. I just have that very, very vivid memory in my mind of the soft, gummy, <coughs> opaque candy whatever. And this one looks like it. That's why I'm so excited. 
what a story time. And this one is a Habanaria Carnea. I honestly don't know how this one is supposed to look like, but it has the most beautiful foliage. I don't think it had the best growth. Oh, I need to water it. Because it got a little bit, you know, uh, stressed from transport. They don't ship well, I find. Or at least my location here, they just don't ship well. Um, but it has the most wonderful dotted pattern on the leaves. Look at that. So I'm excited to see the flower. I don't know how it's supposed to look like. If I'm gonna take a guess, it should be like red, fleshy colored, I guess. I don't know. I'm hoping this one is the one that I'm thinking about or this one is. One of these looks like a gummy. I hope, I think. I don't know which one, but I think it's this one. We're gonna see. In any case, I'm so super excited for Habanarias. We're gonna follow their progress. Uh, I did not even attempt to repot them. I didn't wanna sit them back. They have corms actually inside and you have to be very careful, especially when they're in their dormant state because yes, they take a dormancy and that's how I uh, killed my first one. I watered that corm a little too much and you know with what? With insecticide. When I move countries, remember I sprayed everybody with abomectin and it failed because um, I had spider mites. Yeah, I sprayed a little bit of the corm as well because I thought, oh, what if there are some spider mites on the corm? I should have kept that corm dry. Anyway, so that's how I lost my first one. They're a little finicky, but hopefully we're gonna have success with these two. And lastly, let's talk about the Psychopsis. Let's talk about him. This is him. We have a multitude of flower spikes and cakeys. This is a cakey. We have a multitude of new growth and new flower spikes growing and branches. What we don't have is flowers because what this guy does is it makes buds and then they yellow all the time and I don't know why. I tried to keep it more moist, it didn't work out, I don't know what is happening. I, I have no idea why, the, why this psy psychopsis is not performing, no idea. Uh, so I'm thinking, oh, ants again, slowly and surely, so I'm thinking I'm going to divide him and I'm going to restart him and I'm gonna take the cakeys as well. I don't know, I have to restart him somehow. Yes, I know it's a bit of a shame to give up all of these flower spikes, but they're, they're not blooming. It's just not happening. I don't know. So I'm thinking of restarting him and putting him a different setup. I don't know, it's taking a lot of space for nothing right now. So I don't know. Don't know what is happening. Some of the flower spikes are kind of short as well. I have no idea. I don't know. I really don't. But it's not performing, it's not blooming, and the reason why you didn't see it in, on my channel is not because I lost it, it's because it doesn't want to open those buds and I cannot figure out why. I thought it was the heat, but it does this in all seasons, you know? So it's not the heat. I don't know why. But yeah, it does not bloom. And for now, I think that is about it. It is the season for many orchids to bloom. I do notice in the summertime, except for the cattleyas, I don't really have much activity. Oh, and the summer blooming fowls, not so much activity, generally speaking, but in autumn and spring and throughout the winter here in this climate, I have a lot of activity. Summer, it's, I guess, just too hot for everybody. Even for me, it's too hot for me to bloom. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it's too hot generally. So yeah, that is about it. These are the flower spikes I'm looking forward to and the ones that are just inexplicable. How are your orchids doing? Are they starting to spike? One moment, Maya has something very important to say. Yes, she's right. Some of you should have some Phalaenopsis spikes starting, right? In those areas that are already experiencing a really nice drop in temperature, I think you should start seeing the spikes. I will not see spikes until November probably, but I'm happy if you guys are starting to see spikes. So let me know all about it in the comments below. Alrighty, so with that said, thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed hanging out with me today. And with that said, I hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.